what is the PCT and what is the Paris Convention and how to use both in combination or alternatively. Hi, I'm Rolf Klesen, partner of Freisham and Partner in beautiful Cologne in Germany and I publish a video about intellectual property rights, patents, trademarks and designs every Thursday. And in this video I am interviewed by David Fedawa who uh, from InventRight and one of his clients had the question what is the PCT and what is the Paris Convention? Are they alternatives? Can they be combined? How can they be used efficiently to protect your intellectual property in multiple countries? All right, I'm, I'm here with Rolf Cleason, and we had a big international uh, patent question for him and it had to do with the Paris Convention versus the PCT and I had a question of how do you use these two instruments or these two um, patent laws to get yourself the best intellectual property. So Rolf, can you kind of explain to me a little bit about uh, the Paris Convention, the PCT and how to use those two together? Right, sure. Um, let's start with the Paris Convention. The Paris Convention is a treaty that was signed by nearly all countries I know. I mean, I, I actually don't know any country that didn't sign the Paris Convention. And there is a lots of things regulated in the Paris Convention about intellectual property rights and most importantly the priority right. And the priority right for patents is defined as 12 months in this Paris Convention. That means that if you have a first patent filing, be it a provisional patent application filing in the US or a regular patent a utility patent application filing in the US or in any other country, um, that gives you the Paris Convention will give you the right to file uh, a patent for the same invention, even though technically it will not be new at that time, um, which is a requirement for patentability to file this, uh, a patent for this same uh, patent concept, this, this invention, in any other country in the world, basically, or any country that signed this Paris, uh, Paris Convention. So what typically so you, happens is... So you don't is, need to apply yeah. for that? No, you don't need to apply for the Paris Convention. You need to apply for the okay. patent application that you are filing within the 12 months. Okay. Right. So. What you can do is you file, you first file, let's say, a provisional patent application in the US and then you decide you need also protection in Europe or in, or you file, you want to file a regular um, patent, utility patent application in the US or a patent application in China or Japan. You can do that within the 12 months from starting from the filing date of your first filing, basically. So when you say first filing, can that be a provisional patent or a PPA in the US? Right. That can be a provisional patent application or any other patent application in the world. It can also be a utility model uh, application. For example, in Germany, we have utility models as opposed to, I mean, in addition to patents. And that can also uh, work as a priority date for, um, with, for the Paris Convention. I see. Now, can these be also used um, for design patents or just utility? Yes, um, the priority date is also regulated uh, in, the, in this Paris Convention. Um, also, the priority dates for designs and for trademarks are also regulated and both are six okay. months. So, if you have a design patent application in the US, you have mm -hmm. not 12 but six months to file the same um, design uh, protection uh, in other countries, let's say, for example, a registered design in the EU or something. Mm -hmm. And then let's, let's, let's talk about the PCT, um, how that comes, uh, how that plays into this game. Let's say um, you are uncertain after the 12 months, you are uncertain where exactly you want protection in the world. Let's say either you don't have the money yet or you make, didn't make up your mind whether you want protection in China and Japan and Korea and Europe and wherever you want. Um, then there is a very useful tool, that's the PCT, the Patent Corporation Treaty. And that is uh, handled by WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization in Geneva in uh, Switzerland. And what it does is that you file a so-called PCT application, so that's a real filing of a patent application, 
um, as a PCT <coughs> application and that will count as a patent application in nearly all industrialized countries and even uh, more countries, uh, more than 140 countries. Uh, the most important exception is Taiwan, uh, but in okay. any country that you typically would file a patent application, you can uh, file with a PCT application. And how it works is you um, file this PCT patent application uh, with your local or uh, your your um, your patent office in in US. Uh, you would file it with the USPTO, and then uh, this PCT application will give you 18 more months, so a total of uh, exactly 30 months and some offices even allow 31 months after the first filing date to make up your mind where you want patent protection. For example, um, after 12 months you would file your PCT applications uh, coming from your provisional patent application in the US. You would file your PCT application in, with the USPTO and then after an additional 18 months, so 30 months, you can uh, then still file the same uh, a patent application for the exact same uh, idea, invention in uh, most other countries, let's say in China, Europe, in Japan or where you want. Um, and the European, patent office uh, the European Patent Office even allows 31 months uh, for, uh, being that, for that time limit after the first filing. Okay, so it doesn't cost any money to get the Paris Convention because that's just uh, if you file then you get an extra 12 months after your original filing date to file in any of the countries that are filed or that are uh, holding the Paris Convention, correct? Well, the Paris Convention doesn't cost money, it's just there. It just gives you the right to file after 12 months. Um, but of course, the patent application that you would file at that time, that would cost money. So, for example, if you mm -hmm. file the PCT application, I don't know exactly the cost because there will also be a fee for the attorney and, a fee, of course, mm -hmm. official fees. But I would guess it's, it will be around like four to six thousand US dollars total. Uh, mm -hmm. The cost. I've heard that number too. Right. And um, then. The, the problem with PCT is that after the 30 months, let's say, then, then you decide you want to have a patent application in Europe and China and Korea and wherever, um, then you would have to pay again for, uh, for entering the patent uh, granting procedure in each of these countries um, with a regular mm -hmm. cost you would otherwise have uh, if you would not use the PCT uh, route. So, um, basically, you pay these, let's say, five thousand US dollars for just for buying time. Mm -hmm. So, is it basically, when you're in your uh, patent strategy phase, when you're bringing a product to market, um, is eighteen months worth four to six thousand US right. dollars? Exactly. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Yes, you you get an additional search. Um, okay. by a patent office that depends uh, which patent office will be responsible for the search within the PCT phase and mm -hmm. let's say for US applicants in the worst case that will be the USPTO because probably you mm -hmm. already have a search uh, at hand yep. by the USPTO after 12 months and then you get an additional search by the USPTO probably the same result but um, you can influence, you can have influence on that. And in some cases, even for US applicants, the European Patent Office will perform the search within the PCT phase. Mm -hmm. And then you get at least an, a second opinion, let's say, within the PCT phase from another office uh, about the patentability of your idea. Mm -hmm. Now, so just to, just to put scenarios together so people can kind of relate this to their personal um, intellectual property strategy and kind of how they can start thinking through the process is so let's say I've got a product I'm developing in and I see this being big in the markets in the US Europe and Australia um, what so in terms of speed to market um, what would be the best strategy to get my patents mm -hmm. one and then second um, what would be my least expensive and then what would give me kind of the third option of how do I stretch out my cost the furthest? Right. Let's start with the first option. Uh, 
I understand that you want a route where you can get a granted patent the, the fastest you can in Europe, let's say. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, then you would first, for example, have your provisional patent application in the US or a regular utility patent application. And then, mm -hmm. even within a couple of days or weeks, you don't have to uh, use 12 months. Uh, let's say two weeks later, you file a European patent application for the exact same invention, claiming the priority according to the Paris Convention. And you file that with the European Patent Office. And then okay. you can uh, ask for accelerated uh, examination. It doesn't cost anything. It's a so-called PACE request. And what it does is that the European Patent Office will try to get the patent either granted or rejected within 12 months. So okay. um, wow. you will have a granted or rejected patent within 12 months from basically, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, from the first filing. So you will have a okay. really quick uh, European patent if you follow that route, basically. Okay. And then the second one was, what was the second, uh, how to... Um, hmm? yeah. The least expensive Least expensive, way. right. Least expensive way doesn't involve the PCT because the PCT you pay extra for buying time. So the mm -hmm. least expensive way to have protection in the US and in Europe, let's say, is um, basically the same way as I just described, but you would have okay. time until 12 months after the first filing. So you first have a, a US patent application, be it a regular utility patent application or, or provisional application. And then you would file the European patent application within 12 months. And probably the least expensive way would be to have the first filing not as a provisional application, but as a regular utility patent application, because if you have a mm -hmm. if you have a, uh, a, a provisional patent application first, you have costs there, and you would anyway hire probably uh, an experienced patent attorney at a later stage to draft a real utility patent application and then file it after the 12 months in the U.S. And you can save that first costs by first uh, taking the money to hire a patent attorney to file a regular US patent application and then within 12 months file um, the application directly in Europe with the European Patent Office or if you want protection in China with the Chinese Patent Office and so on. And if you want to stretch out the costs the furthest you, want, you can, uh, mm -hmm. then of course the, um, let's see what would be the, the least uh, the least expensive route would, route would probably be to file a provisional patent application first because that's mm -hmm. least expensive. Then within 12 months you are filing a PCT application um, and that will also count as a regular uh, ut utility patent application in the US. So you don't have to file an extra US utility patent application at that time. So within oh, wow. twelve, I didn't know that. Yeah. So so within twelve months, you file the PCT application, and then from uh, then you have eighteen more months, so a total of thirty months, to make up your mind whether you want a real utility patent application in the U.S. or whether you want a European patent application or Japanese patent application or Chinese, or whatever. So you can stretch out the costs um, to about thirty. Months. So the total costs until that time will probably be around yeah the costs for your um, provisional application plus around five thousand US dollars for the PCT application. Okay. So um, and and that was one strategy that I didn't know was that your PCT filing counts as your utility in the US. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you know when wait, wait. so if we if you had an attorney write up a, a utility patent and just file it not as a utility patent but as a PCT that counts so you yes. save the filing fees yes even yes uh, that's another strategy um, hmm. you can as a first filing you can also file a PCT application so you don't need the Paris Convention or the 12 months or anything 
So you, mm -hmm. you hire a patent attorney to draft a good patent application that will be, the, 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 uh, the language will be adapted to, uh, so it works also in other countries, not only in the US. Um, mm -hmm. And then you will have, um, yeah, then you will have 30 months uh, until you have to make the decision where to actually file um, uh, another patent application outside the US. But uh, yes, it will count as a full utility patent application in the US, the PCT application, <laughs> and it buys you 30 months uh, until you have to make the decision where you want patent protection. Wow, so I mean that's uh, I mean that kind of gives um, international patent uh, or you know somebody just starting out kind of a general structure on hey this is how I can tackle this, this is how I can protect my product internationally right um, I mean I just I love that because mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of stuff in there that I didn't understand about uh, the Paris Convention how that's used how you uh, leverage a PCT to buy yourself 18 more months. Um, you know, I mean, just uh, gold, gold, golden information right there. So thank you so much. Good. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, thank you so much, and um, you know, I, I hope we can we can do another show and tackle another um, interna international or uh, you know European patent issues uh, soon. Sure. Okay. I hope I was able to explain what the PCT is and what the Paris Convention is and how to use them as alternatives or in combination. If you are new to my channel and want to learn more about patents, trademarks and designs, please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, hit like and give me a thumbs up or leave me comments and questions below this video in the comments. And most importantly, protect your intellectual property and go make it count.